as people hang on to that debt and people pay that th those payments over and over again, and each year they get a statement that says they haven't made any uh, uh, progress on their on their principal repayment, and that you know they're struggling every single month, they're working two jobs, it's demoralizing. The, the stage was set. I mean, set. I mean, Canadians had had a lot of issues going back many many years. You know, we were we were heavily indebted. We had really bad spending habits. We looked at our homes as a a financial vehicle to be able to to finance our retirements. Uh, we were we we had so many opportunities in the past where we could bail ourselves out. You know, you build up your credit card, refinance, get rid of those that that debt. Um, you know, buy out your car payment, fail your business, borrow from your mortgage. We've been doing this for so long, you know, and that there's a there's a lot of um, there's a big difference between the way that Canadians spend money and how they interact with debt compared to other countries all over the world. You know, right? Because Europe, they're working under Asia, the assumption Africa, South America, pretty much everywhere uses uh, their home and and the equity in their land in a much different way than we do, and that's and it's unhealthy. And we need to break this trend. I'm telling you, for our kids, sure. for the people who are still here, for the people who want to move here in the future, we got to break this this trend and stop being so heavily focused on warehousing people, you know, and build actual businesses and get back down to reality here. But unfortunately, How prices do, you do just, that. Prices just don't go back down. Prices don't prices don't crash the way that people are expecting. What they do is they stagnate, you know, and that just over time, people will just, you know, eventually say to themselves, I can't pay any more than this. Well, one guy paid last year for that. Okay, so maybe I'll pay that price. And so that it kind of stagnates. But the pressure, upward pressure on pricing, in my opinion, you know, is is gone from the market. In my opinion, I'm 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 seeing it on the front lines. I'm dealing with the people. I'm 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 seeing what type of situations they're in. I'm hearing their situations as far as how they're going to borrow uh, money and and how much debt they can get. Um, I know what their options are, and I know that there's just a ton more people. I think in the development space too, Daryl. I think you need to be careful as well too. I think that there's a ton of developers who are uh, uh, out of cash. They got no more cash flow left. They can't service those debts. There's going to be more and more people putting development land zoned, ready to build development land on the market, you know, because they aren't able to do what they need to do to complete the project. And that is going to be something that we're going to see a lot more of. And that there's also going to be a lot more, uh, there's more power sales right now. We got RBC and uh, Scotia Bank putting up uh, a lender type of power sales lately, I've noticed. So that's something that is that is new. It's not just the private lenders and, and mix and, and B lender guys who are all um, trying to, you know, get their money back. But there's a huge increase in people who just can't afford those payments anymore. And those payments aren't going down anytime soon. And that the debt is there. It's 30 year debt. Like it's not like it's like three years goes by and now it's at a manageable point. At the end of the five year first, the term of your your, your five year, 30 year uh, amortized mortgage, the end of the five year term, you have paid off maybe three or four percent of your loan. You know? A very yeah. small amount because it's end. front loaded with a bunch of interest right? as well, right? And so like, you're just like you're just like, what have I done? Like I haven't I haven't even you know taken a a, a chip out of the out of the principal here. How am I going to be able to get out of this? And it's just it's demoralizing as people hang on to that debt and people pay that th those payments over and over again. And each year they get a statement that says they haven't made any uh, uh, progress on their on their principal repayment. And that, you know, they're struggling every single month. They're working two jobs. It's demoralizing when you're sure. when you're in a home. OK, and you're working three jobs and you see that your neighbor just sold for 100 grand more than you bought it for. And you see that you've paid down your principal 50 grand a year and that you've made all these huge monumental um, achievements. You start to like feel really good about yourself. You say, wow, you know, this home ownership thing is really great. And I'm thankful that I'm working my tail off in order to be able to pay the bills for me and my family. It makes it very rewarding. Okay. That's why we we're in this mess. But when times go, and this has happened in the great uh, recession in the States, and this happened in the nineties, and people are watching that equity decrease. They're watching the value of their homes go down. They're seeing that they're not making any progress on their principal payments. They're working a couple jobs. It doesn't last forever. You do that for two years. And you're spent. You're spent. You do that for six months and you're spent. But you know, maybe you can weather the storm. And after the end of the two years, and these are the people I'm dealing with right now, at the end of the two years, you're going, I can't do this anymore. And you're willing to make any decision 
necessary in order to relieve yourself of that stress because you're not sleeping, your health, you've got major health uh, issues and that you really have impacted your life. And that's what we're going through. There's no denying that I am not the uh, pumper that I'm accused of being. I am I am 100% a realist. I'm dealing with the people right now who are out there struggling and that there's more and more of them coming on the market 100%. They need to sell. And they're in disguise, some of them too. You know, like even the one I sold this week, one of them I sold this week, the person didn't really disclose to me a lot of stuff, but all the signs were there. You know, like I want a short closing and, you know, if I can't do this and I have to do this, like all those little things are there, but they didn't want to get into some of the details with me. But I know for sure that they couldn't go any further uh, carrying that property anymore, you know, even though sure. they come across as being, you know, very stable and, and, you know, comfortable, but that's not the case. As you get closer to the deadline, it gets a little bit uh, less like that. I'm exactly. sure. And luckily the spring, the spring market is giving people a little bit of satisfaction. The prices that I'm getting people right now are everybody's happy with, you know, so that's good. But at the end of the day, it's not going to last forever. The spring market will disappear. Everyone's going to go away again in the summer. And those people, those problems that they have, haven't gone away. So now they'll be coming to me in the summer saying, oh my gosh, I need to list now. Right. But I thought sales were considerably down right now. For, we've, we have a low, for we're still in a low inventory environment. There's still not options for people. So, so but I thought I saw that in inventory was uh, getting up there and that sales were definitely down in the last few weeks. We'll see what the March numbers come up. And I can tell you because of March break and all that kind of stuff that sales weren't like crazy this month at all. But as far as like anecdotally, there's still not a lot of inventory for people to choose from, you know, and we're, and I'm selling everything that I'm putting on the market at the right price. I'm selling it. I'm selling it within a week. And like do we still have multiple is, offers? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything in the in the city, the stuff that I'm selling, I'm getting multiple offers on. And so, so right now, how big a kiss of death is it to price it too high and to have it not sell? It doesn't sell. And then that's what? what it though? Is. That's what then I'm saying. Then you have to drop your price, and depending on them, what the market does, right? So, like, I listed one this week where I I feel like the price is not as good as it could be. But it's a really, um, it's a unique house. Everyone says is unique house, but really it is. There's, there's it's not high, as low as it could be. When you say good, do you mean low? No, yeah, yeah, or like I, I don't, as accurate as it could be. Okay. I think it's on the high side. Yeah, high side. and so okay. I'm getting showings. I just, I just listed it, so I, I don't have a lot of data here. But I'm, I'm, I'm getting showings. It's, it's, it's way bigger than all the other houses on the market. The lot's way bigger than all the other houses on the market. So if somebody wants that, then you know this is the only option that they've got. But just based on like the sales and everything else like that, I wouldn't I wouldn't have made this decision as my first decision. But I went over everything with them. So, you know, they they know what's up. But these are the these are the type of scenarios where, you know, you may not sell. And then you gotta sit down with them and say, okay. And then and the whole point, the whole skill of of being an agent is to understand uh, you know, the situation because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like this is the truth. You know, you're trying to help people, but some people are beyond help. You know, some people, they need to go and they need to try something their way in order to see if it works, you know, and that way you you can show it to them and then they can say, OK, TK, I believe you now. And even though it costs them money, you know, you, if you if you say no to all those people, you're in business like you're you're this is your job is to be able to help people, you know, buy and sell. You know, if you just walk around saying, screw you, you're not willing to do it my way. I'm not, I don't want to work with you. Well, you're, you're probably not going to get a lot all the business that you could. And so sometimes you got to go into the situation and warn them and explain to them why other agents will tell them X, Y, and Z. And you kind of go on that ride with them, you know, but very rarely does that happen to me, to be honest with you. Most people are like reasonable people where, you know, if you show them enough evidence, they go, okay, with me pricing it here. It's just in those unique situations. Like I got a land deal that's coming up, that's coming up in April and the guy's totally unrealistic, but, um, you know, I got to show him, I, I, I want him to, I really care that he is, uh, a hundred percent sure that his land's not worth what the price it's he thinks it is because I know it's, it's so worth. much easier to be but sure I, in an up market than a weird wobbly up and down kind of bottom stagnant. line is if it's worth it people will make you offers you know if you're gonna be if you're worth that number and you list it on the market then you will get offers for that number that's what happens that's what the market does you know it exposes it to the, to the people who it needs to be exposed to. And if we're marketing it and then it's on the MLS and then you've got your other, you know, things happening in the, in the background through your contacts, then that's enough people for you to be able to have empirical data to bring back to the client and say, Hey, this is what you're worth. 
this is the bottom line. This is what the market's telling you. And there's lots of situations like that. No agent can tell you, I list every property at the right price every time and I get it sold because I'm the best. Doesn't happen. Hey guys, thanks for watching our clips channel. Why don't you go and check out some more clips? We got lots of other good content somewhere over here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Boom. That was good. That was good. That was good. I like that. That was good.